Mazda believes that a car is much more than just a mass of metal. Their philosophy is to create an emotional bond between a car and the driver, much like the relationship between a horse and rider. I've spent the past six months developing a bond with the Mazda 3 hatchback. It's got me admirably through a miserable British winter, with the heated seats and steering wheel being especially comforting during those cold, frosty mornings. I think I've given it a pretty good run over the past half a year. I've covered a little more than 7,000 miles, been down to Dorset, up to Newcastle and everywhere in between, including regular trips home from London up to the fun roads of the Peak District. So let's see how I got on with my noble steed over the past six months. It's a smart and sophisticated car which is really enjoyable to drive. I'd say it's pretty spot on if your head says buy something sensible but your heart still craves a little bit of fun. The 2.2 litre diesel engine is great. It's smooth and quiet at both low and high speeds and it responds really well too. So if you need to get past that person who is firmly hogging the middle lane on the M6 driving at 60 miles an hour, then there's no need to drop down a gear. And it's also pretty fast, developing 148 brake horsepower and with a 0-62 to time of 8.1 seconds. The steering. It's well weighted, you never have to guess where the front wheels are going in corners and it is great fun to drive on twisty roads. I think the suspension helped here as well. While it's firmer than on your average family car, it's still comfortable and it helps keep the car nicely balanced. The manual gearbox, it is a good one. The action is really nice and short and it really adds to the driver involvement. The cabin is a very pleasant place to be, which definitely helped with those long slogs home up to Macclesfield. The materials are all high quality and everything feels very solidly built. On top of that you've got an excellent low down driving position which adds to the sporty feel and there's loads of seat and steering wheel adjustment. When the sat nav hasn't been taking me through the centre of Slough to avoid a quiet motorway, it's been trying to change my route by 4 metres in order to save 2 seconds of time or endlessly yelling speed camera, speed camera ahead at me. Speed camera ahead, speed camera ahead. It's always got me where I've wanted to go, just about, but I've not always been the calmest when I've got there. While the Mazda 3 is one of the smarter looking hatchbacks, it's still pretty conservative and I may have misplaced it a few times in bigger car parks. However, I don't think my choice of colour helped here. The front view is superb but there are some big blind spots at the back thanks to the car's swooping design and small rear window. Rear parking sensors or the handy reverse camera I've got are a must. With more powerful versions like this one, you might find it quite easy to spin up the front wheels if you aren't super careful with the throttle and that's whether the road is wet or dry. The boot size stacks up well against its rivals and is bigger than most, but the shape isn't perfect. There's this large lip to lug heavy items over and the wheel arches intrude a little bit into the load bay. So that's what I think of the Mazda 3. It really is a great hatchback. Before it goes, I'm here at TW White & Sons to find out a bit more about what spec buyers of the Mazda 3 tend to go for. It turns out that I haven't gone too far off the most popular spec for my Mazda 3. Across all engines, the top of the range sport nav trim, which this car has, is the most popular choice. The most popular engine is the 2 litre petrol with 118 brake horsepower. And the most popular colour across all models is Soul Red, which I can definitely understand. Only Arctic White won't cost you extra, but the dealer said they hardly sell any in this colour. Right, this is where we talk value for money, give you a run through of the options we fitted, tell you what worked and what didn't, and give you our pick of the must-haves. Colour-wise, there's nothing too OTT available on the Master 3. 
This machine grey is one of the more sombre shades and costs £670. There's the brightest soul red or eternal blue Mika, but that's about as bright as it gets. While it may not be the cheapest option, the range topping diesel engine is our pick. The massive mid-range pull means it feels properly fast. You'll get around 550 miles to a tank, which costs around 45 to 50 pounds to fill, so it's not expensive to run either. I averaged about 52 miles per gallon, which is pretty good going. Trim-wise, this sport nav has pretty much everything you could want. The base level SE trim comes with a decent amount of kit as well though, including alloys, aircon, four electric windows and an infotainment system with DAB, Bluetooth and USB ports. But you'll probably want to upgrade to SEL nav trim. That gets you navigation, climate control, rear parking sensors, cruise control and automatic lights and wipers. There's not much to add in terms of your optional kit on top. I went for the black leather interior for a thousand pounds, but save yourself the cash on the interior unless you fancy being really flash. The hatchback class is fiercely competitive and the Mazda 3 is up against some really great rivals, the likes of the Volkswagen Golf, Vauxhall Astra and Ford Focus, but it stands up to all of them and it's rare a sight on UK roads. So if you want to avoid being another sheep in the herd, then it's the perfect choice. Over the past six months, my Mazda 3 has proved itself in any environment with no major niggles. I would say I've developed a bit of an emotional bond to it and I'm not too sure that I want to give it back. <laughs>